It's my team plowing that I was used to drive and hear the harness jingle when I was man alive. Aye, the horses trample. The harness jingles now. No change though you lie under the land you used to plow. Is football playing along the river shore with lads to chase the leather? Now I stand up no more. Aye, the ball is flying. The lads play heart and soul. The goal stands up. The keeper stands up to keep the goal. Is my girl happy that I thought hard to leave? And has she tired of weeping as she lies down at eve? Aye, she lies down lightly. She lies not down to weep. Your girl is well contented. Be still, my lad, and sleep. Is my friend hearty? Now I am thin and pine. And has he found to sleep in a better bed than mine? Yes, lad, I lie easy. I lie as lads would choose. I cheer a dead man's sweetheart. Never ask me whose. Is my team plowing is written in iambic trimeter, which means there's about six syllables per line, so there's about three iambic feet per line. And also there's two speakers. One is a dead man asking questions, and the other is an alive man who's answering the dead man's questions. So this Q&A format kind of creates a paradox that would never happen because one man is living freely and the other is buried in the ground and dead, so this would actually never occur in real life. And this format kind of comments on the happiness of life versus the mundaneness of death. So looking at the first stanza, the dead man is asking if his horse plow is still operating after his death. We also see the beginning of the rhyme scheme, which is A, B, C, B, meaning the second line and the fourth line rhyme, and the sixth and the eighth line rhyme, and so on. We also see in the very last line of the first stanza, when I was man alive, this rhetorical question takes on an urgent tone as the first speaker is kind of seeking peace and satisfaction with his life after he's died. So the author is kind of commenting on the unresolved issues that we face after we die. And the second stanza is the alive man answering the dead man's question. He says there's no change in the plowing team's performance since his death. Then the dead man asks again if there are still football or soccer matches along the river where he used to play. And we also see in this last line of this stanza, um, another rhetorical question that takes on the same inquiring and urgent tone when he says, now I stand up no more. So he's kind of asking the alive man what life is like after he's died, if it's changed or if it's not to kind of seek out the satisfaction with what he did do in his life. And then in the next stanza, um, speaker two answers this question and he says the men still play soccer very passionately even the goalkeeper and we see a lot of personification in this stanza um, such as the ball is flying and the goal stands up these examples of personification take on a lively tone in order to kind of create a sense of contentness in the dead man so that he feels more satisfaction with his life um, and that he kind of can imagine what his friends are doing after he died. So in the fifth stanza, the speaker introduces this idea of lying or resting. So the speaker says, as she lies down at eve. And this is referring to the dead man's wife, the speaker's wife. And it also introduces this motif of rest and the connection to the theme of death that is throughout the poem. Then when his friends respond, he, he then brings back up this motif of rest and says, I, she lies down lightly, she lies not down to weep, and then he says, be still, my lad, and sleep. So, first, it, you wonder, well, who's making the wife happy in this? Um, it says, your girl's well contented. And then, this is a mystery to the dead man, whose perspective is coming from the alive man, and then he tells him to rest, and don't worry, and this is really reassuring. Um, especially for someone who has died, and maybe is in the afterlife, and is worrying about his family. Then, in the next line, um, the dead man asks, and has he found to sleep in a better bed than mine? Again, talking about sleep and rest. And the dead man wonders how his living friend is, and then if it improves at all. And then it's just continuing this motif that's shown throughout the second half of the poem. And then he says, yes, lad, I lie easily. I lie as lads would choose. I cheer dead man's sweetheart. Never ask me whose. So this explains that the friend is resting easy. He's living an ideal life. And then it's kind of a cliffhanger. It's almost ironic and a little bit humorous that the friend basically implies that he is with 
the dead man's widow. And then that's kind of a startling end to the poem, but it's it's ironic in a way. And then that just furthers this motif of rest and, I guess, um, continuing on after death. It's really interesting. <laughs>